That's 24 minutes. That Mr. Beast out. messed up. Big time. I feel he like did. I wake up every day to new allegations against Mr. Beast that are somehow worse than the previous allegations. And now there are the just so many allegations it's too long. they're hard it's to keep track of. And apparently, the um, my worst is yet to own. come. He is taking an astronomical Netflix amount of L's. Stupid. So many so. The explosion of L's is so Why big. So? I'm getting hit by the shrapnel of it all. And initially, I wasn't going to make a mogul mail about the Mr. Beast situation. And that was for two reasons. The first one is because I made a video on this channel about a week ago called I Don't Like This Channel. And in it, I <laughs> yeah, I talk about I've, how I've I don't like doing own. drama videos. <laughs> drama videos do really well. They get millions and millions they of views. Do. But those yes. viewers only want more drama videos. So I look True. into more drama to make more videos to satisfy the viewers. And it's kind of a negative cycle. Like it, it loops. It feeds itself. It makes a lot of money. That's great. That's cool. But the viewers that come from it and the content that I make from it isn't something that I'm proud of or like. So I want to stop doing it. Over the past year, I've made half as many drama videos. And over the next year... Why is this Chapman st stuff's up? Uh, doesn't he use IL minus his inspirations? From what I heard, can't he... I don't know his recent stuff. I've never been on his website. I, I don't know what he's doing. I know that he did draw stuff on Keemstar's daughter. Who was seven at the time. Which is fucking disgusting. Um, I don't know. I don't know how this man is still running free. I don't know. I have no idea how he's still running free. And how his website is still up. I don't know. Here I'll make a quarter as many until eventually I make none at all. But with this situation, what it's obviously you different, today? you know, Custom not talking pace. about Mr. Beast after he is the most viewed video on my channel. I've appeared on his channel like numerous times. I know the guy personally. People obviously want to know my opinion, but I still sure. thought making a mogul mail might be a mistake because I'm well, biased. Here I'm we biased because I know Mr. Beast, the person. That is true. Esmond Gold also lately has said that he will never make a video talking about someone he knows just because people will already go into it knowing that he will have a bias which is completely fair this is why i'm a little bit surprised that ludwig even is making a video thanks for the follows uh, mashed unsubscribe now i'm back unsubscribe too ah! what was that what was that I think I just touched a bug or something. Ew! Ew, ew, ew! Ah! Like a bug fell onto my fucking knee. Ew! And so Mr. Beast, as the owner of Mr. Beast, the company, the, the, you know, the malfeasance he's done, how he's treated his employees uh, poorly, uh, I'm coming in with a POV of, of what I have seen, which is going to taint looking at it objectively. So I figured making a mogul mail is not the best idea. And it's not like I'm hiding the situation by not making a mogul mail on it. Frankly, there is a lot a fly, of coverage on it. More than probably any situation outside of maybe someone making an apology with a ukulele in the past five years. So I figured- Ukulele? Ukulele? Hold up, hold up, hold up chat. Ukulele! <laughs> Still need to tune this bitch. All I really needed to do was address this situation by watching like the Dog Pack 404 video from the former Mr. Beast employee on stream, and then I could move on to doing things that I wanted to do, like gaming, playing Super Mario 64, you know, enjoying the State Farm gamerhood, yada yada yada. Uh, and anyway, this led to what I would argue is my greatest title and thumbnail ever. Does Mr. Beast fake his videos? Kids discuss. Uh, and also led to my worst live stream ever. Uh, because oh. frankly, the live stream was embarrassing. It was me watching the video, uh, like kind of just trudging through it, pausing, talking about random aimless shit, trying to basically get through it so I could say, look, I've watched this thing. Now can I please move on to gaming without actually objectively looking at what's being said and, you know, and, you know, admonishing where Mr. Beast went wrong and giving my actual opinion on it. Uh, I basically wanted to just get it Box over with uh, without actually taking <laughs> yeah. it at face value. Uh, and it's, don't, don't have to take my word for it. You can look at the fucking like to dislike ratio on that live stream. I think it's the worst live stream uh, oh, wow. uh, I've ever done in terms of dislikes. 53%. Uh, that, that's a failing grade. Uh, and it was so bad, in fact. This live stream I did was so bad. I took such a big L that one of the biggest ASM artists on YouTube, 
Hold a up. corner of the internet known for trying to calm people down and relax them made a 15 minute video roasting me. This is one of the biggest ASMR YouTubers. He 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 put on a fucking roast <laughs> session. Got rid of the ASMR. He usually makes. <laughs> commentary about asmr scandals which apparently there are a lot of i didn't know about all that uh and paused to talk about uh me in, in the video titled the controlled opposition to mr beast uh and anyway i'm gonna play a portion of it here wig especially navigate through this entire drama and issue with the mr beast company over the past few weeks has got to be some of the most insufferable content i think i've ever seen and don't take my word for it take his audience's word for it ludwig or and he's totally right about that fact. The audience uh, was not happy. Uh, and look, man, I wasn't happy. It's not like I'm fucking looking back at that stream. And I'm like, damn, kill that one. Uh, it was bad. This is fake. Okay. I just showed you the likes, dislikes. I don't know where this is from. Uh, the I'll, I'll tell you how this works. This is an estimation. It is an estimation from the um, browser extension. This isn't real. This isn't real. The browser extension just estimates how many dislikes they are based on I don't fucking know what. I don't fucking know how they get their calculations. But yeah, the extension is not the same as the actual facts, uh, as the actual dislikes. Most of the times, the browser extension shows more dislikes than the actual dislikes. But his point still stands. Uh, and, and Jojo continues to go on to basically say that, you know, I spent most of the video focusing on like a few points that were maybe weaker in the dog pack 404 video rather than the broader points that were bad, like the illegal lottery or like forging his signature on different hoodies. Now, uh, instead of actually addressing the serious allegations to do with promoting gambling for children and illegal lotteries, Ludwig spends commentary towards how dog pack 404 knew Mr. Beast had staged his seven days out at sea and how Dogpack could verify that Mr. Beast was on a yacht or not, which completely just... Now, just to push back a little bit here, uh, I yeah. did have a conversation with Dogpack404, the creator of the video. He turns out to oh, actually okay. be a Ludwig viewer. If you look at his most recent video, there's even a point in it where you can see, like, in the sub box, my, my little face is there doing the, the smile thing, Whoa. and I'm live at that moment. Uh, and so anyway, I called him on stream, but... okay. I called him on stream at about the 16 minute mark of the video, which is before any of the illegal lottery stuff. So when I called him, I asked about what happened in the first 16 minutes of the video, which the video is a slow burn and starts off with a lot of stories about things being fake on the channel uh, and whatnot, which surprised me. Right, and this is the exact clip the that I talked about. The fourth day of seven days stranded at sea, you can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But after a hard cut, magically five people are awake and two of the boys have bright yellow raincoats that they didn't have when it rained on day two. And after standing the whole night completely soaked. You didn't spend the night soaked, Jimmy. You slept on the production yacht. It's ironic because this is one of the- And so, I was just surprised by this. Like I'm watching this live, I'm reacting to it. I don't remember exactly what was said about this one, but one of the employees of Mr. Beast came out and talked about this specific one. I don't remember the specifics of this one. Do you guys remember? Fuck, I, I actually don't remember, man. I'm like, damn. I'm shocked Jimmy would do something that dumb, right? Like, for a guy who walks around saying, I don't fake videos, for him to to uh, leave during the middle of the night, go onto a production yacht, is crazy. Because uh, I've done Mr. Beast videos, and, and the ones I do, he doesn't let me fake them, right? I, I had to spend 31 hours on a plane crash. That 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 happened, and I had to sleep on a plane wing. Uh, and so I was curious if this was either Dog Pack extrapolating from the screenshot of them not being on the screen, that they obviously must not be on the raft. Where are they? Well, Jimmy's rich. They probably bought a yacht. Or if he had some insider intel. That is basically what happened. And this is where the initial allegations of controlled opposition started. Uh, and so for con for context, this is me having a call with Dawson, the dog pack. Is okay. you, did you work on that video or are you going off the Dude, video? You are controlled opposition. What does that mean? It means you're trying to get me to reveal confidential information and break my NDA. I don't know what your NDA is. I'm trying to ask questions about the freaking thing. Oh, you know what an NDA is? I do. Yeah, but I Why even bring it up in the first place? Like, 
haven't you? Wouldn't he already have broken NDA by talking about it in the video itself? Like, the fuck? I don't know what your NDA covers. Okay, what should I not ask you? About any videos that I worked on. What? So, Dawson and just said not to ask him about any videos he didn't work on. Uh, but, you know, to be clear, I asked him uh, when okay. he worked at Mr. Beast Incorporated first. Um, I signed the first NDA February 22nd. And then, yeah, it was like uh, April 20... Whatever they said. April 20... So, basically, February to April, even May or whatever you want to say, of 2024, of this year. That's when he worked there. But this video, Seven Days Stranded at Sea, came out August 2023. So, I... Look, just, I didn't think I was asking a question that broke his NDA. I thought I was asking a question about some intel he might have heard from a former employee uh, or like, you know, someone he had worked with in the past. Not anything that he knew that he wasn't allowed to divulge. Allegedly, most of the evidence he showed was public information video, so it might not be covered by the NDA is what some people have suspected. That's what I'm thinking. Like, um... I feel like Dogpack is countering here very defensively for some reason. Like, to me it seems like Dogpack is being very defensive about this. Instead of just, like, saying that he didn't work on it. Like, why can't he say that he did not work on it if the timeline just doesn't add up? How, how would this be in an NDA? Also, why does Mr. Beast NDAs continue after videos are released? Why are part participants required to keep shut about production after the videos are released? Makes no sense. We don't know it, though. We don't know what's in the NDA. An NDA is a contract that you're not allowed to uh, disclose something. Non-disclosure agreement, I believe it stands for, are the exact words. Non-disclosure agreement. Yep, there it is. Uh, so, point aside... Ultimately, it doesn't matter because I did watch the rest of the video and I did see the illegal lotteries, right? The forging the signatures uh, and didn't uh, make enough comments about how that was wrong to do. And, and like, frankly, it is fucked up to sell hoodies that have your signature that somebody else signed on your behalf is wrong, right? You, you shouldn't do that. They should just sign with their names. It's fine if you get a hoodie and it's signed by like Tyler instead of Mr. Beast, but you just can't have Tyler sign on behalf of Mr. Beast. And, and personally, I think Mr. Beast should do right by those people. He's rich, fucking refund them, right? And then the yeah. illegal lottery, the same thing. When people do illegal lotteries in the United States and it goes to court, what happens? They give all said, the money um, they made from follow, follow. those illegal lotteries back and they prove that their business practices have changed so it doesn't happen in the future, right? You know, he might, he might even be able to go one step beyond and not do like the shady cereal box thing where it's like impossible to sign up for free and make it a little easier on people. Uh, but what helped most of all was after that first stream, I just talked to Dogpack offline. But talking to him online was a much worse environment than talking to him offline. And he gave me a good perspective, which is that, look, I know Mr. Beast the person. And with my experiences with them, I came to the conclusion that, you know, I thought he was a good person. I thought he was doing right by people. I never worked at Mr. Beast Incorporated. I just know as, like, talent on shoots how he operates. Uh, and Dogpack came with a POV. Mm -hmm. and so it seems that one of Mr. Beast's tactics is to have very good content creators on some of his videos without faking them to later have help sell the authenticity. That would be a smart move, like, from his side, like, looking from... From the perspective of Mr. Beast, that would be a smart business move to sell that authenticity. Does not make him not a like that does make him not a liar. Like he's still a liar in this case, but like looking at it, smart move. Definitely a smart move. Well, look, dude, you don't know Mr. Beast the company, right? Or Mr. Beast like the the CEO or whatever the title he has at his company. And the things he does there, they don't operate well, all right? His employees aren't being treated right. And that hits home to me. Like, I like treating my employees well. I mean, I made my company a workers co-op. That is very important to me. Yeah, I've seen that. That it's is, not... wow. Like, What's up, y'all? Guess who? <laughs> Why is it not working? That's right. It's me. It's your boy, it's your boy Esmond. Esmond. Yeah, here's the pillow. I don't know why it's not working. It's something that I take lightly. But I had to divorce the idea of like this guy that I knew 
and what I think about this guy versus how he operated his company and the bad things his company did. Uh, now, so that first video, uh, that, that was the main issue with it. Uh, and that was wrong. It was a shit live stream. Anyway, Jojo goes on to then talk about the most recent live stream I did, which was reacting to the second dog pack video. And this one is an interview okay. with Jake Weddle, a former employee who became a contestant the, um, and the, the bad conditions he had as a contestant them. on a like, uh, 30 days in solitary video makes the take who Jake who bear in mind at this point is sleep deprived they haven't turned off the lights whatsoever he's had no exposure to sunlight has been in solitary confinement has had to deal with awful putrid smells of uh, tubs and uh, Ew, dairy what? products disgusting, and paint fumes disgusting. Ludwig actually makes the take that instead of Mr. Beast making the challenge for Jake to run a marathon out of nowhere he should have instead made the challenge for uh, if he wins it that Mr. Beast would actually then turn the lights off, which is an insane detached take to have. He was thinking at it with his content brain. He was thinking at it as a content creator. He had content creator hat. He had content creator thinking. He wasn't looking at it from the perspective of a human. He was he had a content uh, creator had a uh, brain. The pay thing makes sense. The bigger thing that they shouldn't have done is made him run a marathon and then kept the lights on. Like that to me is the things that were wrong. That's the wrong part. Th this feels like a very Esmon take, honestly. Like this feels like something Esmond could have said and no one would have judged him for it. Because Asmund is just admittedly an asshole, and he looks at it from content perspective too. But because it's Ludwig, he's being judged more because he's not openly an asshole overall. So yeah, just to be clear, I just said they shouldn't have made him run a marathon, and they shouldn't have like kept the lights on. Can we watch that back? Which is an insane detached take to have. The pay thing makes sense. The bigger thing that they shouldn't have done is made him run a marathon and then kept the lights on. Like, that to me is the things that were wrong. Shouldn't have made him run a marathon and then kept the lights on. So, yeah, just to be clear, I just said they shouldn't have made him run a marathon and they shouldn't have, like, kept the lights on. Right? Like, turn the lights off, have some way... Because, like, usually in Mr. Beast videos... Okay, so what I'm getting is that it's phrasing. If there's something that a competitor struggles with, that then becomes the next thing he offers as like a way to detract money and it becomes part of it. Yeah, content kit. And it's what they brain. do in like Survivor or other shows. You know, like in Survivor when they're not eating for a while, uh, Jeff then comes up with a bag of rice that they play for or whatever that they can split. Uh, and so they adapt to how... Not only is he thinking of this as content creator brain, he's also thinking of this as if he was in the situation because he's been part of... He's been part of Mr. Beast challenges. Like, he's also thinking it from that perspective. The person is struggling. So they should have done that with the light, obviously. Uh, and then made not made him run the marathon. What's going on? Like, you can't even do this stuff to terrorists, as they say in the video. How is this the take that you're making? And the comparison to, like, actually professionally produced TV shows like Survivor are inappropriate on all fronts because those shows, as I said, are professionally produced with a safety team and HR and all of these facilities to ensure the contestants are uh, being taken care of. Look, I am not passionate about this analogy. What I was basically saying is that they should have kept the lights off. They just should have kept him off at night, allowed him to sleep. But they made a mistake. They fucked up. So then they should have at least adapted, right? They hear this guy, Jake Weddle, the competitor complaining. They come in, they go, okay, we can turn the lights off in exchange for you giving up like a hot tub or whatever. Basically like what they did in the other video they made about solitary confinement where they would give up items in exchange for money. You know, at least allow it to be a part of the contest instead of not turning the lights off and then also making him run a marathon, which several times I admonished throughout the stream because it's like obviously a fucked up thing to do. They literally tortured a guy for likes. Yes. Yes, they did. 
the guy signed a contract on it. I don't know how well informed he was on all that shit. Survivors also met with trained people too. I don't know if or how in what capacity there were trained professionals or not on there. Contact contract doesn't matter in such a case. Um it does matter, first of all. It does matter. Because to hold Mr. Beast accountable in this case. If he's able to hold him accountable or not. In the end, it sucks. It is a shit situation he was put into. I agree. But he, in the end, agreed to this challenge. Contracts can be voided if one of the sides know about serious health issues. No, so doesn't know. Literal legal torture can't be covered by a contract, Kitsu. Alright. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. You know what? That's fair then. I'm online just to t take Esmond away from you. <laughs> Anyways, bye. Bye. I can't sign a contract for you to skin me alive. Contracts, I believe, are void if a person is doing criminal stuff like torture. This is this is too much of legal talk that I am up, not yeah. too educated enough right. in to it's be me. talking on it. But we need Asmongold for this. <laughs> for this one, we do need Asmongold. Because there would be the there would be some I guess this this it matters then it needs to be looked at specifically how and in what way it would be torture or not. I'm hoping that Legal Eagle does a video on the new video for the legal information. Yeah, like I, I am not educated enough to speak on this if this would be legal or not in this case. And the survivor uh, comparison came up because I, I know he's saying survivor's professional. Some fucked up shit's happened in Survivor. Bulgarian survivor, a guy died, and then they continued to air the show and showed his death on air. What the fuck? French survivor, somebody died. They, they just, they died. It was like a 25-year-old. They died because, the, you know, the conditions of survivor are very difficult on the heart and the body. Right? Even the most recent uh, edition of the American survivor, Liz didn't take a shit for 16 days. That, that is when it, begin, it become, uh, becomes a medical emergency. So when you're past two weeks of not taking a shit. And so that's why I was thinking... Is like, okay, when that happens in the show, they obviously aren't trying to kill these contestants, but they adapt in it to make sure that they are doing better. And, and that's what they should have done in their Mr. Beast shoot. Not at all saying that, hey, to get the lights off, you have to give up $10,000 and run a marathon. Yeah, and he's not saying if the video made is okay or not. That's not what he's talking. He's already having the conversation how the video in itself, like how this entire thing could have been made more humane. Seems a lot just phrased it wrong. Yeah, it does seem to me as well that it was just uh, awkwardly phrased. Not it at all. Basically saying there was a lack of adaptation on the behalf of the producers uh, and Mr. Beast Company. Uh, but And then he continues on to say the, the bigger fault that I had and probably the worst thing that I said in the entire reaction. And the other right. take that Ludwig had said several times in the stream was, well, if he was having trouble, he could have walked away from this challenge whenever he wanted. He could have just stepped away. I mean, it's his decision at the end of the day. He didn't have to be there. Um, it, but I, I empathize with the difficulty of the challenge, but ultimately you are you know what the challenge is when you go into it. And I think you that's that's what I'm thinking of right now as well. Like, that's what I'm thinking of at the moment still, too. And that's What's why up, you guys were yes, saying, why is it not working? That's right. Sorry, I, I just don't know why this isn't work, working. That's why I'm also saying, like, I don't know the legalities of all of this. It also is the psychological factor of invested effort. I you guess, walk, yeah. Right? And it just. So this is just a lie. I don't know why JoJo did this. I didn't say that several times. Here's the exact clip of me saying it. Thighs of the difficulty of the challenge, but ultimately, you, are, you know what the challenge is when you go into it. And I think you can walk, right? And then I continued on. This is at the very start of the video before he even talked about how the lights being on breaks the Geneva Convention. It's a war crime. 
Uh, and at the end of my thought, I say this. Value this man's experience based off of much worse experience. But this one, you can't walk. Well, I guess we're going to get there. I, I, I just said, I, I guess we're going to get there because I was live reacting to it. Uh, and when I got the new information that, Good you know. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. <laughs> Yes, the United Nations UN considers sleep deprivation to be form of torture and a war crime under the Geneva Convention and the UN Torture Convention. Okay, it's torture then. Then it's literally torture. Okay. Okay. That's, that's insane. Oh, oh good. So this it's is literally after torture. I said the he can leave thing. Because I just didn't know about it yet because I hadn't watched that part of the video. And towards the end of the video, I literally talk about how insane it is of, of you know, the producers in Mr. Beast production to have set up an environment where an individual like Jake deteriorated so quickly. Like, like the, within 10 days of him being in there, he was struggling so much with it that even now we're counting it three years later. It is an overwhelming topic to talk about. But it's... What's more interesting to me is how quickly he deteriorated in the smaller time frame. You know what I mean? Like, I guess that's how tough it was for him to be in that environment. And the lights on and the smell and all that he was describing. And look. Maybe JoJo okay, just continue. watched, like, the first part of the live stream or, like, you know, found the worst things that I said out of context and threw it together, uh, which is fine. I get it. But throughout the entire live stream, I thought that this story from Jake was horrible, right? Like, genuinely, I thought it was fucking horrible. It reminds me of that Japanese game show contestant, Nasubi, which Charlie made a video about a guy who was kept in solitary for almost a year as a part of this huge Japanese variety show, an aspiring comedian who had the option oh, to- wasn't it the guy that was just naked and was supposed to um, get uh, that only sustained himself by using coupons or something? Is it that one? I believe I watched Esmond react to that. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, Esmond Gold. leave but never left and i've watched his hulu documentary it's really i played devil's advocate but how long did the contestants go without sleeping because yes it's horrible it happened but this was considered entertainment yeah i don't know either like and the fact that i don't know firstly the fact that he didn't walk away that he kept at it firstly secondly that they continued themselves with this. I mean, it never went into a video for a reason. This was never made into a video for a reason. But it, how long was it? He was a paid actor, though. Well, yeah, he was paid. And if it's inhumane, like, if he can't go, it, why doesn't he just say he can't go any further? They said that they needed 30 days for a video and that he had 7 to 8 days to go. So I wouldn't think about 22 days. Wasn't it? No, no, no. They needed 30 days for a video, but it was a longer time period. Wasn't it 90 days? Like, if I recall correctly, like, the overall thing was 90 days, but they wanted 30 days for the video itself? 100 days. Thank you. Thank you. And he... How long did he make it? worth watching it's called the contestant if you haven't seen it uh and so for everyone whose position is oh he could leave whenever he wants it's not that easy and i talked about this on my live stream i mean i don't even All think right. like it needs to be that deep like i just believe like if you are talent uh like jake weddle was for the shoot about 10 days okay that, like it you know what's a good example really fuck man here's a homework assignment if you guys haven't seen this shit not even homework assignment it's just a good video it's called nasubi uh documentary but it's about again this japanese yeah, comedian one. who took that's part in this wildly popular game the show in Japan. And shit. oh my god this shit was insane and then when it seemed that he was already done 
It just continued, and he was put in front of people naked again. That shit was insane. Uh, and there's a Hulu documentary called The Contestant about it. And in it, he describes how he spent a year of his life in a room in solitary, basically, naked. And why he never left, even though he was allowed to leave at any moment. And I think that... Because the whole time you're watching, you're like, why didn't he leave? Why didn't he leave? And I think it's because the opportunity seems too great to pass up. So, like, I think he's trying to, like, connect that, like, oh, there's this document. It says... Psychologically of invested effort. Oh. Says, oh, you can't take no for an answer. There's a sales strategy, whatever. Like, I understand the connections he's trying to make. Sure, that's all fine and dandy. But I think much more powerful than any of that is the just, like, uh, you know the the thought of the, you know this opportunity is too big to pass up or something the choice to leave on inhuman shows are not actually choices because of the power producers have over the contestants like what lot just said okay so i don't agree with the people who say he could leave whenever he wanted right there's three hundred thousand dollars on the line there was the pressures of the shoot and and wanting to be a good contestant and Jake described himself as someone who money. grew up without any money. And so this money was life-changing, you know? Fair. Like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I totally yeah, understand yeah. Yeah, why okay. he didn't leave when he first Fair. started to struggle. And I understood that as I watch a video, which is what happens when you watch a video, right? Yeah, I didn't know it in the first five minutes of the video because he didn't get to that yet. So I don't know why JoJo went off to say all that shit about me saying that he could leave whenever he wanted. I disagree with that now. I disagreed with it when I watched the video. Uh, and I really think Nasubi is a good example for anyone who still thinks right now, like someone watching this probably thinks he could leave whenever he wanted. Watch that documentary. Because that guy... Dude, that, a, very good point, actually. Like, very good point. A making. year. Solitary confinement. Naked. No human contact. Like, that changes you kept for it. the rest of your life. Yeah. Literally the rest of your life. Uh, and he never left. You get to a point where your mind literally becomes trapped and you more or less are psych uh, physically unable to leave. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. Why? And, like, that, that documentary explains it in ways that I don't think I can to people who still think that same thought process. Hey, he can leave whenever he wants. It's also worth noting that my chat was cringe for the entirety of this stream. Of course. It's chat a lot of drama cringe. frogs, but it's also a chat lot of just ride cringe. or die mystery. Sorry, chat. It is what it is. It is what it is, chat. Mr. Beast lovers <laughs> who want me to be like the bastion in defender of Mr. Beast. And throughout the stream, I was defending Jake against weird people in chat. He's not reading off anything. Everyone keeps saying he's reading off stuff. He's just clearly like a stand-up comic. or Social like pressure, definitely. Well, no, he's just clearly a, a, st a fan of stand-up comic, a stand-up comic himself, and he talks very much like a stand-up comic does. Like a very much like the, like the you know thing is like if you, there's like a, it's, it's the same with YouTuber voice, there's stand-up voice, and he has stand-up voice. And just to be clear, people who are in my chat being cringe about the situation don't reflect how I feel about the situation. I tried to put it in members-only mode to curb that in the first place. Yeah, definitely. Like, first of all, chatters... Like, main chat doesn't reflect the streamer's opinion. And then on top of that, all the extra people that are there don't reflect the streamer's opinion. Stream and streamer are not one entity. And if you're wondering how I feel about it, I'll tell you right now. I think Jimmy needs to make a reply. Like, he, he technically does. doesn't need to. He, he does need to, but I don't think he's going to because if he just keeps on pushing videos out in all honesty children will keep watching him children will keep watching him he can he can try to definitely just keep go going uploaded a youtube video and it got one not saying that it's good or that he should be doing that but i'm saying that he might just continue as it is on the same way with never making a statement 120 million views and he could probably continue to upload videos without ever replying and continue to get hundreds of millions of views. But I won't be able to support him. I won't support him in any way, shape, or form if that's what he does. Because I think he needs to reply specifically to why he hired a sex offender. Like, how, yeah, how did why? that happen? How? That's Honestly, how? I, I so want to believe in the good. I do want to believe in the good. As much as I can be a pessimist, I so want to believe in the good of this. I, 
I am I want to believe in the good of it. As much as it sounds like he must have known. I I'm just gonna sit here and wait. I'm not saying I'm going to continue supporting Mr. Beast. I have never actively supported him in any shape or form. I rarely ever watch videos from Mr. Beast personally. All I knew from Mr. Beast is that he does a lot of good things. Like, help blind people see again. That, for example. But, yeah. Because he already got that chance. I... I don't know. It would be one thing if he was hired as a team janitor as a part of rehabilitation after jail time, but he wasn't. Yeah, but also the crime was in 2010, so it was like 12 years in between that. I'm not excusing it, and I'm not saying that... that it, uh, all I'm saying is that it wouldn't have been as rehabilitation after jail time. I don't even... Yeah, okay, the crime was in 2010. I don't know how long he was in jail. Also, like, just stopping myself in the sentence. I don't know how long he was in jail. I hope long for. What did he get out of the, like, t less than 10 years? Like, what the fuck? Like, now thinking about it, the crime was in 2010? And... That just... Just thinking about this, this doesn't make sense. Why is he out after 10 years? What the fuck? Like, a person like that. He took a plea deal, apparently. A plea deal. What's a plea deal? Like, what exactly is a plea deal in this uh, um, case? Because I don't exactly know. have to get this off my chest, kid. So charity is the most used way to... By criminals to whitewash money and clean up their image. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Play deal, I'll admit what I did, so go easy on me. That's fucked. That is so fucked that those people can get plea deals in those crimes. That is fucked up. I made an edit for you and posted it on Twitter. If you want, you can check it out after stream. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I shall, I shall. Even if he did them, it was fine because at least those people did benefit from it. Those people did get the benefit from it. Like, even even with the charity, those people still got to see again. Those people still got houses. It's still a good thing overall. The, what's behind the scenes is still bad. Like, it's... This isn't a black or white matter is the thing. Like, in my opinion, this isn't just black and white. It's not just black and white. It's not like Jimmy could rip their eyes. <laughs> yeah, take, take that side away again. <laughs> take it away again. Crazy thing to do with a guy who runs a channel that is uh, primarily targeted towards children, you know? Uh, apologize to Jake Weddle. Like, how, how did that situation end up as it was? Were producers on it fired? Like, what course of action was taken? Like, how was, how was right done so no one else is treated like Jake again, you know? Uh, everyone who bought a forged Mr. Beast hoodie got to get their money back. They got scammed. They got scammed. Literally, I love getting scammed, literally. but that's probably a little too much. Uh, <laughs> everyone who participated in an illegal lottery uh, needs to have right done by them, right? You need to just make up for everyone who participated in those because that is against the law. And then also show how you change your business practices so that doesn't happen again. And finally, I also need to know about like beast games. Like what is going on there? Obviously, a lot of that's shrouded in secrecy and it's like, you know, little whispers. So what's actually going on? And that still doesn't account for him having to reply for things that haven't yet come out, right? Dogpack says a like third part's coming in, uh, uh, out, and it's about how he covered up uh, like sexual assault at the workplace, which is by far the most severe claim what? that has yet to come out what? that still come out. 
uh, and he'll have to make a reply to that too. And when I say have to, I mean like that's at the bare minimum what I expect from him. Now, I did talk to Mr. Beast uh, because I was actually supposed to partner with him. Uh, the timing's not great. Obviously, you didn't, we had no, 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 no. I did not know. I, I, Chet, this, this entire shit was coming out as I was uh, still having COVID. So, the most I've watched of this was Asman reacting to a video of Dog Pack. And I fell asleep twice! I watched that video twice. And on live. I watched it on live. I it kept losing off because I was sick. I put it on, fell asleep because I was sick. I put it on again, I fell asleep because I was sick. Wait, kids are surprised I missed something. Um, yeah, that Mr. Beast supposedly is covering up sexual um, SA. And at the time being, at the time being, it was also alleged. And then there was another employee coming out and trying uh, to debunk all of that shit. So, and after that, I didn't look more into it. After this, there was things coming out every single fucking day and I couldn't keep up with it. So this is this right now. This is me catching up with the situation. I'm catching up with the situation right now, chat. Right now, as we speak, I'm catching up conversations months before any of this came out but feasibles his chocolate bar company was supposed to be one of the big sponsors for streamer games uh and so it was inked we were supposed to do it i called him and i said two things one what are you probably. going to reply and he echoed what was said in the dog pack video which is uh when everything comes out he's going to make one reply as opposed to a reply after okay. every single video okay uh, so okay we'll see when that happens Okay, so he's just waiting for everything to be released right now, and then he's going to reply. And then two, uh, he allowed me to pull out. So, like, for everyone saying I'm controlled up, I'm paid by Mr. Beast to defend him, just so we're clear... He's not defending him in any matter here. I'm now losing 100k by not defending him. And Ludwig doesn't need the money. He has enough money. He does not need the sponsorship. Right? Like, that... That's just on the opposite side. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. This event's going to lose money. And I know you might be thinking, Ludwig, you're a millionaire. That's true. But this doesn't reflect against me. It reflects against off-brand. It's not a decision I make lightly. This decision impacts all the employees. And I'm not saying anyone's getting fired. Of course not. If we are over that cash low, I would make sure that I, you know, I help the, the cash reserves. But it does reflect in the books at the end of the year. A company can only thrive if it's making money, if it's profitable. You can't be not profitable for years and still exist. And at the end of the year, we're going to be 100K down, which hits a lot. So it's not an easy choice to make, but I know it's the right choice to make. And I feel like putting my money where my mouth is should hopefully prove that I'm not paid to defend Jimmy in any way, shape, or form. Anyway, that's basically my thoughts on it. I know there's a new dog pack video coming out, uh, which I absolutely will be watching. I've been keeping up with basically everything but maybe refraining from commenting online uh, and leaving it to the more Pegasus uh, of the world. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate you all. See you later. Goodbye. See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Mr. I get Ludwig's side, but he has a very terrible text in the first video, which he did say. He did say that, but, or rather he addressed those takes or how the takes weren't taken in context properly in the first video. He didn't address them. I, I, I think this was a good response video to the first stream he did. He's clearly biased as he knows Jimmy. He, Of course a person is always going to be biased towards someone they know. Of course, because they want to believe in the good of the person that they know. Because they don't know the bad side of the person, allegedly. We all will defend a friend, definitely. But he is not defending Mr. Beast in this. I... Yeah, hello, Neko. Yeah, hello. Hello, I will. He is not defending Mr. Beast on this. He is not. He's not. I don't see this as him defending Mr. Beast. But he wasn't strategic in his opinion. So what? I understand partly why Ludwig reacted initially the way he did, as 
I'm even biased towards friends and people I was a fan of. Of course! Of course, of course. The, f the live stream, he admittedly said that he just wanted to get through it. He didn't want to make a video, but he kept being pressured by people to make some sort of statement because he knows Mr. Beast. And I think this is terrible from people to be expecting a statement of someone they know. Um about someone they know because it is always going to be a bias because obviously a friend is going to defend the friend because they want to believe in the good of the friend people are way too easily influenced by commentary channels to be honest that is also true that is also very true that is also also very very true Wait. wow this this is a hell of a topic man this is a hell of a topic um yeah if this comes out on youtube thank thanks for watching i might watch the pack videos i'm not too sure if i'm gonna react to them though so thanks for watching thanks for watching